This is the patient assessment trauma scale. Our scenario today is an 18 year old male who was struck by a car. First I want to check and see I have my BSI on, my gloves, and my safety glasses. Next I want to make sure that the scene is safe. Is the scene safe? Yes. And the fact that this is car versus pedestrian, can I assume that this is a mechanism of injury? Yes. How many patients do I have? One. And based on the mechanism, I'm going to call ALS backup, and also based on that same mechanism, I am going to have C-spine precautions taken on this patient. I'm approaching the patient, I'm getting a general impression of the patient. What am I seeing? An 18-year-old male lying face down on the ground. Based on the mechanism and his presentation, I'm going to make him an unstable patient. I'm also going to look for a chief complaint. I'm looking for any life threats. Any life threats that I can see that need, that need to be addressed? No. And right now? And we're going to position this patient as well for assessment. What's his level of consciousness based on AVPU? Response with flexion posturing. So he has flexion posturing. Okay. Um, I'm going to open his airway. Is his airway open? Yes. Is his breathing adequate or inadequate? Adequate. Adequate. This time I'm going to place oxygen mask 15 liters on. Any injuries that might interfere with his breathing? No. No. Okay. Any uncontrolled bleeding that I need to take care of? None. None. Um, what's his pulse like? Rapid and weak. And what's his skin color, temperature, and moisture like? Pale, cool, and moist. And his capillary refill is? Delayed. Is delayed. At this point, I'm going to consider this patient to be a high priority patient. I'm going to do rapid transport off scene. I'm going to use a head to toe secondary assessment because of his presentation. First, I'm going to make sure that uh, C spine continues. I'm going to reevaluate the mechanism of injury. I'm going to reconsider my ALS backup. And also, I'm going to redetermine his level of consciousness using Glasgow Coma Scale. Based on what I've found so far, I'm determining he's going to get five on the Glasgow Coma Scale. First, I want to start at the head and I'm going to check for any kinds of trauma to the head, lumps, bumps, bruises, abrasions, bleeding, anything I see up here in the head? Abrasions to the top of the head. His abrasions to the top of his head. I'm going to come down and I'm going to check his eyes. I'm checking his pupils. His pupils are? Left pearl, right 10 millimeters, non-reactive. So his left pupil is non-reactive. Any, any damage or any trauma to his face? He has abrasions on his face. On his face. Any bleeding from the nose or ears? No. Any discoloration um, behind the ears or under the eyes? No. I'm going to expose the neck. I'm looking at the neck. Any deviated trachea, distended neck veins, or any trauma to the anterior portion of the neck? No. I'm palpating the posterior portion. Any crepitus, tenderness, deformity, swelling, anything I feel back there? No. Okay. I'm palpating the anterior portion of the chest for, uh, and neck for subcutaneous emphysema. Do I feel any? He has it on his neck and upper chest. Okay, sub-Q is present. I'm going to place an appropriate size collar on the patient's neck. And I'm going to expose, I'm going to cut away his shirt. And I'm going to expose the chest. And I'm going to palpate for crepitus, tenderness, deformity, instability. Does his chest rise equally? No, it's an equal rise and fall on the okay, left so, side. Okay, so he has a flail chest on the left side. So I'm going to place a, my hand over that site and my partner is going to come in, place a bulky dressing, tape it in place. Is or Has that wound been managed? Yes. It's been managed, okay. Let me listen to lung sounds on the left side. His lungs are? Clear on the right, diminished on the left. So the left is diminished, the right is clear. I'm going to expose the abdomen. I'm looking for signs of distension, bruising, bleeding, abrasions. Do I see anything like that on his abdomen? No. I'm going to palpate all four, all four quadrants, trying to elicit tenderness, and I'm looking for, I'm feeling for guarding, rigidity, anything like that in his abdomen? No. Okay. I'm going to cut away his pants, I'm going to expose his pelvis. Any signs of trauma to his pelvis? No. I'm going to sweep for a priapism. Is there a priapism present? No. I'm smelling for incontinence of stool or urine. Is there anything? No. I'm going to stress his pelvis gently inward and downward. Is there any pain or tenderness when I do this or instability? No. I'm going to stress 
the lower extremities. I'm looking for fractures, abrasions, lacerations. I'm checking both legs. Anything on the legs? No. I'm checking bilateral pulses. Equal. Equal. And when I pinch his feet to elicit a response, does he respond to me? No. Do the same thing to his upper extremities. I'm checking for fractures, bleeding, lacerations, hematomas. Check the other arm as well. I'm checking bilateral radial pulses. Does he have equal radial pulses? Yes. Okay. And when I apply painful stimuli to his, his hands, does he respond? No. No. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to log roll him. And we're going to expose his back, looking for signs of decap TLS, looking for abrasions, tenderness, uh, swelling, deformity, crepitus. Do I see anything back there? He has abrasions to his upper back. Upper back. Okay, I'm going to get posterior lung sounds at this time. I'm going to slide a backboard in. We're going to put him on the backboard. We're going to secure him to the board. We're going to get a set of baseline vital signs, a sample history, and we're going to transport this patient to the hospital. On the way to the hospital, we're going to ensure that... Okay. Begin the station by indicating that the proper personal protective equipment is being used. Size up the scene to determine that it is safe. Gather other information about the incident. And consider the need for any additional protection or resources. First thing I'm going to do is I've got my BSI PPEs on. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, determine if the scene is safe. The scene is safe. The scene is safe, okay. Once at the patient's side, determine the patient's chief complaint and use the initial assessment to identify and manage any immediate life threats. These include the ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation, and any immediate interventions necessary for the patient's condition, such as the administration of oxygen. Okay, I'm going to determine the nature of illness. Uh, patient? This, this patient has difficulty breathing. Difficulty breathing? Okay. I'm going to determine the number of patients that I have? One. Okay. Uh, I'm going to consider any additional resources that I might need. Okay. Um, also consider a stabilization of the C-spine. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to determine, um, verbalize my general impression of the patient. Um, I have a male patient with a chief complaint of difficulty breathing. Okay. I'm going to determine the level of consciousness of my patient. I'm going to ask him, hey, hey, are you okay? With the initial assessment complete, the rescuer should perform the focused history and physical exam for this conscious patient. This phase of the assessment includes establishing a baseline set of vital signs, interviewing the patient, and investigating any problem areas identified as part of the initial assessment and focused history. Use the mnemonic SAMPLE to gather important information about the patient's history. Sample stands for signs and symptoms the patient is experiencing, allergies, particularly to medications, medications, including prescription and over-the-counter medications, past medical history, particularly involving similar episodes in the past, last oral intake, including food and beverages, and any events leading up to this problem. What seems to be going on? Uh, I have trouble breathing. You're having trouble breathing? Yeah. Okay. Um, obviously, my patient is conscious and alert. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and assess my patient's airway. Um, obviously, he is a patent airway since he is talking to me. I'm going to assess my patient's breathing. And while I'm going to do that, I'm going to listen for lung sounds. I'm going to have a patient take a, deep, take a deep breath for me, sir. Okay. You take another one? Okay. Another one? Okay. And one more. Okay. Uh, with this patient, I'm hearing bilateral wheezing in all four lobes of the patient's lungs. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the patient on some oxygen. I'm going to put him on 15 liters on a non breather mask. And while I'm getting this set up, I'm going to ask my patient some, some questions. Um, are you allergic to any kind of medications? No. No. Are you taking any medications? Yeah, albuterol. Albuterol? Okay. Um, what kind of medical history do you have? Asthma. You have a history of asthma? Mm -hmm. 
Anything else? No. Okay, what was the last thing that you ate? Some pizza. You had some pizza? Okay, what were you doing when this happened? I was uh, watching TV. You were watching TV? Mm -hmm. Okay, has this ever happened to you before? Okay. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this mask on you, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, just go ahead and take some deep breaths for me. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get a set of vital signs on you, okay? I'm going to check your blood pressure and your pulse and stuff, okay? Okay. All right. Let me see your arm real quick. Okay, so you're over 96. And I'm going to check your pulse, okay? Checking your pulse. Okay, pulse is present. As part of the focused history and physical exam, the rescuer should evaluate any pain the victim describes by using the letters OPQRST. These letters stand for onset which refers to the point the problem first started. Provoking factors, which refers to anything that seems to bring on the problem or make it better or worse. Quality, which refers to a description of the pain, such as sharp, dull, stabbing, squeezing. Radiation, which refers to any additional areas where the pain may be present, such as chest pain that radiates into the shoulder or jaw. Severity, which refers to a pain scale typically 1 to 10, with 1 being normal and 10 being the worst pain imaginable. And time, which refers to items such as whether the pain has been constant or intermittent and if it has occurred on other occasions. With information gathered and a closer inspection of any affected area conducted, the rescuer should verbalize and perform any appropriate treatment for the patient. This would include obtaining medical direction as needed, making patient transport decisions, and conducting a detailed physical exam if warranted. The ongoing assessment enables the rescuer to repeat the initial assessment, vital signs, and focused assessment regarding the patient complaint. It also enables the rescuer to check to see how the interventions performed so far are working.